any fans of retro gaming are bound to remember the days of the memory card. These were pretty revolutionary at the time because they allowed you to save data from multiple games to a single device which made data management a lot easier. They were quite small which made them ideal for taking over to a friend's house to continue your progress together. And best of all, unlike with most cartridge based systems, the memory card didn't use an internal battery to store data, meaning that it's a much safer way of storing your saves for the long haul. By now, we've probably all heard of people losing their Pokemon save data because of the battery inside of Game Boy cartridges running out after all this time, but the memory card doesn't have this issue. Some versions of the memory card were fancier than others, with the most ambitious probably being the Dreamcast VMU. This featured a whole screen on it, which sometimes simply displayed a nice little animation that tied into whatever game you were playing, but sometimes it actually acted as a proper second screen experience, with games like Resident Evil Code Veronica using it to display your current health, a feature which was lost in every subsequent release of the game. You could even use the VMU when you were away from from the Dreamcast itself and take part in some mini-games which were transferred onto it from certain titles. The most iconic memory cards though have to be the ones from the PlayStation systems. With the insane number of sales both the PS1 and PS2 had, everybody in their mums would have had a few of these lying around. I probably had more than the next person because for a little while I thought you needed an individual memory card for each game you played. Don't judge me though, I was about 6 years old at the time. Now though, a company called 8-Bit Mods have taken it upon themselves to combine modern storage technology with the memory cards of old and have come up with the Memcard Pro 2. So what exactly is this and how does it work? Let's take a look. 8-Bit Mods were kind enough to send us a couple of their Memcard Pro 2 units for review and I have to say, I'm particularly happy that I discovered these because I've been wanting something like this for quite a long time. It's always slightly irritated me how you can't use a single memory card for both PS1 and PS2 save files. This is probably down to the way that they save and load data making it difficult to have this level of backwards compatibility and to be honest I am aware that this is only a minor annoyance considering that if you're playing a PS1 game on the PS2, you can just plug in a PS1 memory card and it'll work just fine. But even so, I can't be the only person that is just slightly irked by this. Another issue with the memory cards of old is that they didn't actually have all that much storage available on them. PS1 memory cards were only 128 kilobytes in size, which means that they could only save data for around 15 games, and some games needed more storage which would have reduced that number even further. PS2 memory cards were a lot better in this area being 8 megabytes in size and allowing you to save data for approximately 30 games, but this number could be dramatically increased or decreased depending on the games you are saving. So that brings us to this. But what exactly is it and how does it solve all of these problems with the original memory cards? This is the Memcard Pro 2. It's a PlayStation memory card that you insert a micro SD card inside of which can give it up to 2 terabytes of storage. Effectively, it's a micro SD card to memory card converter, but boiling it down to that isn't really doing it any justice. The way that this works is that for each 1 gig of data that you insert, it creates 128 virtual PS2 memory cards, or alternatively, 8192 virtual PS1 memory cards. Even if you just inserted a 2 gig micro SD, it's unlikely that you'd ever run out of storage in a lifetime. So if you now picture having 2 terabytes of storage, it's practically infinite saving potential. Before we get saving though, let's take a quick look at the setting up process here, because it turns out that things aren't quite as straightforward as plugging in a micro SD and being ready to go. Luckily you are provided with some really easy to understand instructions which you can access by scanning a QR code that comes with the memory card or by going onto the 8-bit mods website and downloading them from there. The first thing to confirm is that the micro SD you're using is at least a class 4 or above. This is easily identifiable by this tiny little number on the card which has a circle around it. Most modern cards will be class 10, but if you're using older or extremely cheap ones, it might not be a good idea to rely on those for this. 
Next, you need to format your microSD to make sure that the memory card will actually be able to detect it. You can most likely just do this as you normally would through Windows, but 8-bit mods recommend a piece of software called SD Card Formatter, which worked perfectly. Then, by following the link in the digital instructions, you can download some firmware update files, slap them into the root folder of the microSD, and then plug that sucker into the memory card before plugging that into the PS1 or PS2. It will then automatically turn on and install those update files when you turn the console on. Now comes the trickier bit. The Memcard Pro 2 can connect to the internet, which is extremely useful for managing your save data. So you'll need to hold the button on the left of the memory card, navigate to the Wi-Fi settings, and create an access point which will be picked up by your PC or your phone as an internet source. Connect your device to that source using the password mcpadmin, go to your web browser and type 192.168.4.1, and follow the basic instructions that you'll find there. Hey presto, it's connected to the internet. Have a sip of coffee to celebrate, and then it's on to the next step. Unplug the memory card and plug it back in, and then as it's booting up, it'll display an IP address. So quickly take a photo of this or write it down and go back to your PC. Type this IP address into your web browser and it'll bring up the web UI, which is pretty important, so I would save this to your favourites for easy access later. By using the web UI, you can update the memory card without needing to take the micro SD card out, create and manage all of your virtual memory cards, and access some advanced settings that you might want to configure to your preferences. I created two sets of virtual memory cards for both the PS1 and PS2, one for backing up old save data from my official memory cards, and another to simply save new data onto and use it like any normal memory card. But you do whatever floats your boat, if you want to go ahead and create 28 virtual PS2 memory cards, you do you. You can even give these virtual memory cards a name, and whatever name you give them will be displayed on the screen on the Memcard Pro 2. Because yes, just like with the Dreamcast VMU, this memory card has a built-in screen. It's nowhere near as crazy as the VMU, but it is pretty handy, because it gives you this super simple way of cycling through your virtual memory cards on the fly, without needing to have a PC or phone to hand. Basically, tapping the left or right buttons on the memory card will cycle through 8 virtual memory cards. If you want more than 8 virtual cards, the easiest way of doing this is by creating new ones on the web UI on a PC, and after doing that, you then just hold the right button on the memory card to swap to the next set of 8 cards. If you want to swap to the PS1 virtual cards, you have to hold the left button which brings up the main menu, press the left button again to cycle through the options, and then press the right button on the setting which switches to PS1, and then it's exactly the same situation as with the PS2 cards. I feel like me explaining this is actually making it sound more complicated than it actually is, but trust me, when you're actually doing it for yourself in person, it's super easy to set things up, and it's really quick to navigate everything too. A nifty little feature of the Memcard Pro 2 is that it'll sometimes be able to automatically detect the game that's being played, and will create a memory card for that specific title, and even display its name on the screen. This would come in particularly handy if you had a modded PS2 with thousands of games installed on a hard drive, because you wouldn't need to remember which virtual memory card has a particular save on it, because the Memcard Pro 2 will just automatically switch over to the save file for the particular game that you're playing. While this is an awesome feature and definitely has its use cases, I personally decided to turn this function off using the web UI. The reason for this is because I wanted to keep all of my save files contained to as few virtual cards as I possibly could. With me having a physical collection of games, I don't really need to utilise this auto-detect feature, and I would rather avoid creating entire virtual memory cards for singular games when it isn't really necessary. It's also worth pointing out that if you're using completely unmodded hardware like me, then not every game will be detected by the Memcard Pro 2, which could end up making the auto-detect feature slightly unreliable, and could even result in losing track of where certain games are being saved to. Still, this is an awesome feature, and I would say that it's almost essential for a modded PS2 due to the sheer amount of save files you'll be juggling. In terms of the way it works from here on out though, you'd probably expect at this point that it was basically just a regular old memory card, just with a whole lot more storage and that works with both PS1 and PS2. 
However, the Memcard Pro 2 has a few more tricks up its sleeve that you might find interesting. Something I was intrigued by is the ability to take the save files from this fancy new memory card and download them onto a PC through the web UI. This is a really awesome way of backing up those important save files that you never want to lose access to. A more interesting use case for this though is that you can actually take those downloaded save files from the Memcard Pro 2 and convert them into something that's compatible with an emulator like PCSX2. Effectively this gives you cross saves between real hardware and whatever your emulation device of choice is. Simply download the virtual memory card you want access to from the web UI, change the name of the file extension from a .mc2 to a .bin, insert it into the memory card folder created by your emulator of choice, and mount it to one of the memory card slots, then just launch the game and continue from where you left off. There's currently no way of re-uploading that save file back onto the Memcard Pro 2 from the web UI, however you can simply take the microSD out of the memory card, re name the file extension back to a .mc2, then just drag and drop it across from a PC. It is also probably worth pointing out that PlayStation save files aren't region free. This means that if you're in a PAL region like me, you need to make sure that your game ROMs are the European versions. Otherwise, the save file that you take from your console won't be detected by the game that you're playing. Basically, just make sure that the region of your game ROMs matches up with whatever console you're using. But even with that slight caveat, how amazing is this? If you've put dozens of hours into an RPG on real hardware and you wanted to carry on playing it on the Steam Deck, there's now a fairly easy way of transferring your real save data over. I do wish that you didn't need to mess about changing the file extension and that there was a more efficient method of uploading your save games back to the Memcard Pro 2 from an emulator, but maybe this is something that could be added in the future. Another additional feature of the Memcard Pro 2 is that it has full-on compatibility with PS3 consoles. By plugging a micro USB cable into the memory card, holding the right button and then plugging the other end of the USB cable into the PS3, you'll enter a secret menu where you can access PS3 mode and transfer your PS1 and PS2 saves over to the PS3 and vice versa. This is an awesome feature because normally you'd need to have a completely separate memory card to USB converter and these are actually quite expensive nowadays. But here, the memory card is also the converter. Just bear in mind that obviously only certain early models of the PS3 are backwards compatible with PS2 games so the mileage you get out of this feature will vary. I do also quickly want to mention that because it's fairly easy to transfer files from a PC to the memory card, this would be a very handy device if you were looking at soft mod in your PS2. Normally you'd need to either have an adapter to put a piece of software called Free Macboot onto an official memory card, or buy a memory card with it pre-installed. But with the Memcard Pro 2, it's a much more streamlined process. And as if all of that wasn't enough, 8-bit mods are teasing that the Memcard Pro 2 is going to be able to act as a wireless receiver for a mystery product that they've got in development. The obvious implication here is that they're working on some kind of wireless controller that can connect to the memory card directly instead of needing an additional receiver. I mean, at this point, is there anything that this can't do? I'm giving the Memcard Pro 2 9 dodos out of 10. It's an incredible piece of kit and is genuinely going to completely replace all of my old memory cards. I won't need to be swapping cards in and out all of the time depending on if I want to play a PS1 or a PS2 game. The storage is never going to run out and I have an easy way of backing up any important save files too. It's a modern solution for a piece of dated hardware that improves upon the original version in every conceivable way. There's really not too much to complain about at all here. If I was nitpicking, I could say that the initial setting up process with connecting it to the internet is a little bit overly complex. But the provided instructions do an amazing job of guiding you through step by step, so I don't think this is too much of an issue. I guess that it would also be very slightly better to have some dedicated software for the Memcard Pro 2 instead of going through the web UI, but again this is such a minor thing that it's hardly worth bringing up. 
You could also make an argument that it's a little bit expensive. They currently cost £39.98, which is approximately $50, and for that price, you're not getting a micro SD card with it. So you'll need to buy one of those separately, or just use one that you already have lying around. Personally though, I think this cost is justified, considering that it's literally the only memory card you'll ever need for any PlayStation system ever again. And some of the additional features it offers are amazing. Also, while there are much cheaper alternatives out there, the quality of these products might not be the best, and I personally wouldn't trust them to work forever. So if you want to be sure that your save data isn't going to become corrupted or inaccessible, I would pay that little bit extra for the added security you get with the Memcard Pro 2. Plus, you've also got to consider that you'd normally need to buy two separate memory cards for both the PS1 and PS2, whereas here, it's all in one. But let me me know in the comments what you think of the Memcard Pro 2. Is it something that you'd be willing to add to your collection? Personally, I think it's great and it's always a good sign when I know that I'm going to be using something even after I've finished one of these reviews and this is definitely one of those cases. As always, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like, subscribe for more retro content coming very very soon and I've been Rob from Retro Dodo and I'll see you in the next one.